Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 6th of December. Amit Shah makes dignity for displaced pitch over JNK bills, says POK is ours. US says it is waiting for results of India's probe into Panmu Madhav plot. And Malala Yousafzai likens Taliban's treatment of women to apartheid. And now for all the details, India's Home Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday said that the two bills related to Jammu and Kashmir introduced in Parliament's winter session will give justice to those deprived of their rights for the last 70 years. Shah responding to discussions on JNK Reservation Amendment Bill and JNK Reorganization Amendment Bill said that the legislation seeks to give representation to those who had to leave Kashmir due to terrorism. The amendment bill proposes to increase the number of seats in the JNK Assembly from 83 to 90 and also nominate one member from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, claiming the region is part of India. Shah blamed the past governments in the erstwhile state for the exodus of Kashmiri pundits and spread of terrorism. He said Jammu and Kashmir was betrayed in the past for World Bank politics, but PM Modi corrected it. जिनों को अन्याय हुआ है, जो अपमानित हुए और जिनकी अनदेखी की गई है, वो सभी लोगों को न्याय दिलाने का बिल है, उनको अधिकार दिलाने का। जम्मू में पहले 30 सीटें थी, 37 सीटें थी, ये भी न्याय का सवाल है। जम्मू में पहले 37 सीटें थी, अब 45 हुई है, 43 हुई है। कश्मीर में पहले 46 थी। अब 47 हुई है और पाक ऑक्यूपाई कश्मीर की 24 सीटें क्योंकि वो हमारा है हमने रिजर्व रखी है मान्यवर 24 सीटों को Meanwhile, the leaders of opposition parties created a ruckus and also staged a walkout after Shah blamed former PM Jawaharlal Nehru for the POK issue and called it a blunder. Rescuers used boats to reach people stranded in their homes amid widespread flooding in India's Chennai on Wednesday after Cyclone Mishong barreled into the southern coast, bringing in heavy rain and winds that uprooted trees and damaged roads. So far, at least 13 people have been killed in the flooding, which was triggered by the torrential rains that preceded the cyclone. Rescue workers were seen wading through waist-deep water and of submerged vehicles, while Air Force helicopters dropped food rations to people stranded in flooded homes who are struggling for basic essentials. Residents who had borne the brunt of a similar flooding eight years ago have raised concern over the ability of the city's infrastructure to handle extreme weather. We are living in a Valachery area. Here uh, it is got full of flood. We are uh, suffering uh, last few days. Uh, without power and uh, without uh, any uh, uh, basic essentials and we are suffering a lot we, uh, without water also we are uh, living here uh, still now we are uh, you can see that uh, uh, no one came here to remove this water clogging so we are suffering a lot and amid the panuro the spokesperson for u.s state department matthew miller has said that washington is waiting to see the results of india's investigation Good into afternoon. the foiled plot to kill khalistani terrorist gurpatwan singh pannu miller in a presser said the u.s is taking this matter very seriously and it has also been discussed with senior officials he further said washington also urged new delhi to cooperate with canadian investigation into the killing of another khalistani terrorist hardeep singh nijar we have um, noted at the most senior levels of this government, the Secretary of State has raised this directly with his foreign counterpart, that we take this issue very seriously. They told us they would conduct an investigation. They have publicly announced an investigation, and now we'll wait to see the results of the investigation, but it's something we take very seriously. The U.S. has indicted an Indian official for involvement in the foiled plan to kill Pannu. India has described it as a matter of concern and asserted that follow-up action will be taken based on the findings of a panel investigating the charges. Moving on, a complete shutdown strike was observed in Gilgit, Baltistan recently over a hike in wheat prices and removal of subsidies. 
Local traders opposed the imposition of illegal taxes and termed the move as their exploitation. A report. Traders in Gilgit, Baltistan recently observed a complete shutterdown strike against the recent hike in wheat prices and demanded the government to fully restore subsidies on essential items. The rate of wheat, which was heavily subsidized for the region, has increased to Rs 52 per kg from Rs 20 per kilogram in June. The protesting traders said wheat subsidy is the inherent right of the people of Gilgit, Baltistan and they feel this is injustice. ये सिर्फ ताजिर बरादरी का मसला नहीं है बल्कि पूरे आवाम गिलगित बल्तिस्तान का मसला है सब्सिडी का आप अगर इशू को उठा के देखें तो पूरे दुनिया के अंदर जितनी भी जो ममालिक होती हैं उसके अंदर जो माशरे के पिसे हुए तबके होते हैं उनको सब्सिडीज दी जाती हैं अगर पंजाब का भी आप मिसाल उठा के देखें तो मेट्रो बस एक बड़ा मनसूबा है जिसके अंदर पंजाब के वहाँ के लोगों को सब्सिडीज दी जाती है लेकिन ये जो गिलगित बल्तिस्तान एक मुतनाज़ खत्ता भी है यहाँ पे तो और भी इसके सब्सिडीज हर तरह की दी जाए लेकिन ऐसा नहीं है The locals of the occupied region expressed anguish over governmental incompetence and corruption amid the ongoing economic crisis. They warned they will continue their protests against illegal taxes being imposed on them. कोई भी अफसर हो तो चाहे चीफ सेक्रेटरी साहब हो तो वो इधर आजम हो कोई भी हो बेजत तरीके से ये हमारा काम दुरुस्त करेंगे चंद रोज तक हम देखेंगे नहीं हो गया तो बस इस्लामाबाद तक हम जाने को तैयार है सब नोबेल पीस प्राइज विनर मलाला यूसुफ जई ऑन ट्यूजडे लिंक तालिबान रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन वुमेन इन अफगानिस्तान टू द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ब्लैक पीपल अंडर अपरथाइड इन अलेक्चर इन साउथ अफ्रीका ऑर्गेनाइज बाई नेल्सन मंडेलास फाउंडेशन Yusuf Zai survived being shot in the head by a gunman when she was 15 in her native country Pakistan for campaigning against the Pakistani Taliban's attempts to deny girls education. Yusuf Zai said the Taliban's action should be considered gender apartheid and international actors should not normalize relations with the Taliban which returned to power in Afghanistan in 2021. And I cannot fathom the injustice that the women in Afghanistan are facing. They're going through a gender apartheid where they do not have the opportunity and the right to work to education girls cannot go to a secondary school a woman cannot do a job she cannot earn for herself she has to ask for permission to go out of her house even if she wants to see a doctor or get groceries this fundamental right of choice and autonomy is taken away from them Since seizing power the Taliban has also stopped most of gun female staff from working in aid agencies closed beauty salons barred women from parks and curtailed travel for women The Taliban say they respect women's rights in line with their interpretation of Islamic law and Afghan customs Moving on Nepal police on Wednesday detained 10 people accusing them of sending unemployed youths for illegal recruitment into the Russian army in exchange of huge amount of money According to a top police official detainees illegally charged each person up to $9000 and sent them to Russia for recruitment on tourist visas mainly through the UAE It is case of human smuggling the police official told news agency Reuters adding that further action will be taken following discussion with the government lawyers the development comes a day after kathmandu confirmed the death of its six nationals in the ongoing ukraine russia conflict nepalese citizens are actively recruited as gorkha brigades in armies of britain and india under a tripartite agreement however in recent days nepali youth have joined foreign militaries as private citizens to avail better benefits and citizenships Six colonial era artifacts returned to Sri Lanka by the Netherlands were showcased at the Colombo National Museum on Tuesday following a legal agreement signed in August for the island nation to regain ownership of the looted objects. The colonial artifacts included the bejeweled cannon of candy seized in 1765 by the soldiers of the Dutch East Company which was in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. In 2020 the Dutch Museum said at least 4000 objects in its collections have clear ties to the country's colonial empire which spanned some 300 years and whose main centers of power were in Southeast Asia and the Caribbean. Sri Lanka's cultural minister said he hoped for the return of more Sri Lankan artifacts. There are some more to come and we hope to get them back not only in Netherlands 
but also in other countries like Great Britain. And I asked, so we are uh, already, we have started negotiations and I hope they will be fruitful. And very soon, they will also have the ability, capability and guts to return what was taken from our country. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.